Today, using the XAF free web API offer, we'll secure the MAUI application we built from scratch in previous videos. In just a minute, we'll create three custom endpoints and we'll bind their results with the MAUI user interface. We plan to use them to request authorization info and to read and back up our business data. So in the background, I have the MAUI solution we worked on in previous videos. The links are in the description. In addition, I'll run the MAUI application, and now I'm looking at the UI notifying me with a security message. It says that I shouldn't spend my time typing because of security issues. I want to improve this behavior. Instead, I can create a custom endpoint to get if the user has permissions to create posts. I can use it to show a message when the add button is clicked. First thing, I usually visit the XAF help page and you can see here the details covering common cases. This section covers security. There is also a sample controller. I'll review it and start coding. So now I'll create a controllers folder and I'll create my controller inside. Now following the help sample I just visited, I create a custom endpoint controller and I'll first write and then authorize using these ASP.NET core attributes. Next, I need to inject the XAF security provider. I'm going to need it to get the security system for my endpoint. Finally, I will declare my custom endpoint, a can create method with a type name parameter. I'll use the provider to get the XAF security system. Then I'll locate my net type from the string parameter using the XAF types info system. Finally, I'll send an OK, passing the result of the security can create method. The endpoint is now ready for MAUI requests, so let's move there. I'm headed to the iDataStore interface I used in previous videos. I'll add a user can create method here. And I'll move in the Web API service class to implement it. I'll use the HTTP client we created in previous videos. I'll request my custom endpoint and deserialize the result. I'll add a type name parameter for the post type. The Web API endpoint I just declared needs it. We now need to call this method when the add button is clicked. Next, let's go to the items page view to see what's there on the add command. It'll help us decide how to make this call. Okay, here it is. The add toolbar item uses the add item command. We could write our web API call there. The add item command is on the items view model. And here it is on the constructor. What it does is on indication, it navigates to the new items page. So I'll grab the data store service from the base view model and I'll navigate only when the user can create posts or else it will show an alert. Now I'm going to test how it works in the UI. So run the web API service and the MAUI application. I'll log in as a viewer user, which is on restrictive permissions. I see my records, but let's try to add one. The custom web API responded, access denied. It all works great, excellent. Now I'll log in as an editor user, which has full permissions. I expect to see the new item page and all is as expected here as well. Next, I'll create another endpoint to request author photos and display them in this view. First, let's visit the author type, which is the application user type stored along with all my business data in the platform agnostic module. Here is the application user, and as I can see, there is no photo property. So as usual, I'll visit help about entity framework images.
I see I can use a byte array. However, because photos can be large, I prefer the media data object that has delays and does not auto expand. I really enjoy how easy XAF help makes my daily tasks. So let's declare this photo property. However, this is a new property and has no data. It will be impossible to test without them. I'll use the authorization manager we built in the previous videos to update my user's photos. I'll log in as admin. And set a photo for my editor user. I'll do the same for my viewer user. Now back to Visual Studio. I'm headed for my custom endpoint controller. I'll declare an author photo method that returns a file stream and will return a file and the photo bytes. With XAF to query data, we use an object space. To create the object space, we need an object space factory service. So let's inject it into our constructor. This dependency comes from our startup where we register the object space provider. And I see here that we've used one that's secured. So I'll go back to my controller and we'll rename the dependency to secured object space factory. Finally, I'll use the factory to create an object space, which I will use to query my post object from the post ID parameter. My bytes are under the photo media resource property. At this point, I want to draw your attention to the photo.media resource properties. The photo is the media data object I added previously to my application user. The media resource and other business object that hold the actual bytes. In addition, we query data using a secured object space and will return no data for those two types as there are no permissions. So let's fix this problem again with the Blazor Authorization Manager. I will edit the default role and I'll create a type permission for the media data type object. I'll do the same for the media resource object. Finally, I'll make both my editor and viewer users obey the permissions of this role. Now I'm ready to write code to consume this endpoint for my MAUI application. First, I have to go to the iDataStore interface to declare the signature. What I need is a getPhotoAsync method that returns the byte array it gets from the endpoint. Next, I open the Web API service to implement this method. I'll use the HTTP client to get the byte array for my custom endpoint passing the post ID parameter. What's left is to bind the result of this method with the MAUI page. So I move to the items detail page and I'll add an author label and an image, which I will bind to my item view model thumbnail property. And finally, I go to the item detail view model and I will declare an image source thumbnail property, getting the bytes from the iData store method I coded previously. Now I'm ready to test in the MAUI UI. I'll authorize the editor user and we'll visit the detail page of one post. And here it is, the author photo. Now I have this great detail view I would like to request for my web API with a custom endpoint to archive it. First, I'll add an archive button to this view. Mm -hmm. 
and I'll bind it to the archive command. Now in the view model, I declare it, then create it. And I could, if I want, secure it using the previous endpoint I created or ask for my data store to execute it. It's marked red because we haven't implemented it yet. So let's move to the iData store first to declare the signature. We need a method that returns void, but we can wait and pass a post object for archiving. I'll send a post request to my archive custom endpoint and in the body, I will serialize the post from the parameter. And I'll notify with messages on success and failure. Now the MAUI side of the equation is complete. What's left is the web API side. So let's move to our custom endpoint controller. I will create an archive method and I'll use the from body attribute to get my post object. In addition, I will mark the method with the HTTP post attribute. What this method will do is it will save the post title, the content, the author, username, and photo. The post parameter came from the MAUI request, so it does not contain all the info we want. We need again to use the secured factory to get it from the database. Then we can simply serialize those properties to disk. Now let's test it in the MAUI UI. Again, I'll go with the editor user. Then I will visit a post detail view and click to archive it. Wow, everything worked great. Excellent. And that's it for this video. If you liked it, please give us a thumbs up or you can leave questions and comments below. And don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell so you get notified whenever we release new content. Thanks for watching and thank you for choosing DevExpress.